driven by having a Google Plus local page, and we can see that with these links here and the feature listing we get on the right-hand side here. So our client here, Pacific Hills Treatment Center, has a Google Plus page, so hence they get some of that really nice feature listing information um, on the left, on the right hand and the left hand side here, as well as the feature map location. So as a deliverable from this visibility page, always be thinking from a local SEO perspective and driving leads and exposure in a local orientated search. So if, um, as we as we create the account and our system goes and pulls in this data, um, when we pull that in, we get one of three states returned. Found and accurate. We found your listing on, say, Google Plus Local. And the data that you put into our platform from a fulfillment standpoint is the same as the information that's on that business page. Found with possible errors. This is by far the most common state. We found your listing on, say, Yahoo Local. However, the phone number was incorrect the address was incorrect, that will have a negative effect on your local SEO because your data is inconsistent. And finally missing, we did not find a listing for the business information you provided on the third party site. So we get those different states and if I hit show details here, we can see where those discrepancies in data could be. In this case, it's Pacific Hills Treatment Centers Inc. is on our Google Plus local page. However, into our system we put Pacific Hills Treatment Center without the ink. So those discrepancies are in red. So what are the deliverables from this visibility portion? Why does your client care? They care because it will affect their local SEO, uh, especially from a Google standpoint, which is where predominantly 99% of the people search. On the other third party sites, that will also contribute to that local SEO. Um, and also, it will drive reviews on those sites. You cannot get Yelp reviews, you cannot get Yahoo local reviews, etc. if you do not have an account on those third-party sites. So if we want to start leveraging and getting some of the benefits of generating positive reviews, the first step is to have a listing on that review site. Um, finally, as I say, the consistent data on the site. It's an unfortunate scenario if someone finds your business on, say, City Search, and they want to give you a call to give you some business, and your phone number is incorrect. So from a lead generation standpoint, Having the wrong phone number, having the wrong uh, address is a very poor user experience. We get this present score at the end of the uh, uh, visibility portion. That's the number of sources, and these are sources being local, Google+, etc. Number of sources we have divided by the number that have found an accurate or found with possible errors. Notice this is not an accuracy score, it's a present score. And in terms of accuracy, Google+, Plus doesn't really care if you're information is almost correct or kind of correct, it's black or white. Either you have a correct listing or you don't have a correct listing. So three deliverables, three business deliverables from visibility, local SEO, lead generation from correct data, um, as well as um, uh, having those listings on those sites to start generating positive reviews. Every, every local business wants that prime listing and having a Google Plus uh, account with good data and reviews is the best way to drive that. So jumping into reviews. For every visibility source we find that has reviews associated with it, those reviews will then get pulled into our reviews tab. So again, this happens automatically after account creation. So hopefully what you're seeing is that this is a really light product from a fulfillment standpoint, from getting the data into the product. Really the, the, the challenge or the opportunity from a sales perspective is just positioning uh, what we have here from a business perspective. So we're pulling in reviews, we can cut up our reviews to see you know, how many five star reviews we have, where did our reviews come from, in this case we only have three, insider pages and yellow book. As we scroll down we can see our reviews. Now depending on the client that you're positioning to this to, there could, there's potential for many, many more reviews. Uh, businesses in the hospitality vertical, in the automotive vertical, um, traditionally have lots and lots of reviews. So there's lots and lots of content here. On the right hand side here we have our trending cloud. So I can select something like uh, drug rehab and I can see all the reviews that have dr drug rehab mentioned and the star rating associated with it. So if this was a business that had more reviews, I can use that trending cloud to start making some business decisions about whether a product or service that I offer is being used in a positive or a negative connotation. 
So we have these reviews in the product. What can we do with review data? Why is it important to a small business? Well, conversations are happening online now. Uh, clients, prospects, customers, they're showing their opinion about your business online. They're going to Google+, Plus. they're going to Yelp to say how they feel about your business. And that really means that clients are controlling a business's brand rather than the company controlling their own brand. There used to be a scenario where you could throw up a billboard or a newspaper ad for you know, American Airlines that says, you know, we don't oversell our flights, we have the best luggage, we, uh, best luggage control, we never lose your bags, etc. And that was fact, because that's what they told you. However, now, when I go on to a review site and I say that that's not the case, that now becomes my perception of the brand. And as we know, perception is reality. So, having this user-generated content really gives us some powerful business intel that we can then use to modify our business processes, to reward staff that have done an excellent job, or perhaps to um, improve our processes and improve our staff training to ensure that certain aspects of our business uh, don't have a positive, uh, don't have a negative connotation. So, positioning these reviews, it's not just about responding to good reviews and thanking clients for saying good things about our business or responding to bad reviews to try and mitigate some of that. There's a whole bunch of really powerful business intel that we can use from a process perspective. So that's one portion. The other portion is user-generated user -generated content has a higher trust value than traditional advertising. Um, there are some stats out there that say uh, up to, uh, I think it's 80% of people trust user-generated content and reviews online. That's because these reviews, this is now word of mouth. Previously, you couldn't, you couldn't quantify word of mouth because it was you know, what your neighbor said to the other neighbor. How, however, now, instead of having that conversation, that person is writing a review online or making, making a recommendation online. So now we've taken word of mouth and we can now quantify that from a digital standpoint. And we can leverage that word of mouth. So here we have someone who has said something really wonderful about our drug rehab center. Five stars. My personal experience is overwhelming. It was brilliant, etc., etc. That word of mouth now is digital. We can then share this by hitting the share link and pushing that out onto our social networks. So we can get as much leverage from that positive user-generated content as possible and um, push that out onto our social networks and get as much exposure as we can. Uh, absolutely. So the more reviews you have, um, the way that you can leverage those from a SEO standpoint is to share them on your social networks because one of the or on your website because one of the things that Google takes into account is is fresh content, new content. So as you're pushing that content out onto your Facebook page or your Twitter account or your website, that's fresh content that has Google sees it and it drives up that ranking. So absolutely. Mentions. Hopefully um, you guys are familiar with Google Alerts. Um, if not, Google Alerts is a system where you can put in some keywords and get content that's out on the web based on those keyword searches. What we have here under mentions is an advanced Google alert system where we can put in some keywords and some searches and some queries and find and scale the web for content that has those keywords. And that might be about our business or it might just be about our vertical in general. So what does that look like? If I hit edit searches here, we have a whole myriad of searches running. If I hit edit on this first one, we have Pacific Hills treatment as an exact match and the city San Juan Capistro. So what we're saying here is any piece of web content out there that has Pacific Hills treatment and this city will be pulled into our platform so we can then look at it and see whether that's content that's of interest to us or not. And here we have some other searches, you know, Pack Hills, perhaps that's how it's known in the city, Pacific Hills treatment centers, and this Kirby Dean must be one of the deans there or, or um, the manager or C excuse me, CEO. So why mentions important? Mentions is really a, a active listening. It allows us to put in some searches and pull in a whole bunch of content from the web. So when anybody, whenever anybody is talking about our business, whether it's a blog article, a Facebook post, um, a piece of news on the web, we can get that pulled in. So we're not having to find it. It's just being pulled straight into our dashboard and we can then 
make some business decisions about that content, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. On the right-hand side here, we have a sentiment engine, which applies some sentiment to the mention, whether it's good, very positive about my business, somewhat positive, neutral, etc. And if we find some good content, so let's have a look at some of the stuff we have here. Uh, this looks like some sort of web article. Let's have a look. Orange.networkofcare.org, Pacific Hills Treatment Center. Since its inception, the most trusted California drug thing, blah, blah, blah. This looks like a um, sort of a directory article, but it's also you know, about our business. So if this was something that we wanted to share, we could hit the share link again and push this out onto our social media networks. So it allows us to find any time our business is being mentioned. And then, as I said, being able to share that really easily. So again, this is about content creation. One of the most tricky things about um, social media is trying to find that engaging content. If we can find some interesting articles about our business or about our vertical and share them, um, that saves us a whole, lot of, a whole lot of time in terms of content creation. Jumping into social. Again, the social portion leverages what we do on visibility. So we find the Facebook account and the Twitter account and the Foursquare account on the visibility portion of the product, and then we pull that activity into our social tab. So if you're familiar with Hootsuite, this is a Hootsuite type scenario where you can have all of our um, social activity in the one dashboard. So I can flick between my Facebook account and my Foursquare account, etc., and see what's happening on those accounts. This is a real time saver and uh, increase in efficiency because I'm not having to log into these different platforms to see what's going on on my, on my social media account. Alternatively, I can also share content or post directly so I don't have to go to Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn independently to post content. I can post content to all of these platforms. I can also schedule content to go out at a certain time. So again, I can do all of my work and all my social activity from the one dashboard. Next, we have the competition portion. Small business is always interested in what its competition is doing and how it stacks up to its competition. Um, so we have two aspects of competition on this tab, the online share of voice and the social audience. So the online share of voice, what we're doing here is we're taking keywords or services like drug, alcohol, and treatment. And we're saying that uh, in, our, in our specific area of um, San Juan Cristino in California, uh, we're saying for that location with this service, that represents 100% of the online content, of the online mentions. Now, of that 100%, how many of those mentions or pieces of web content also have Pacific Hills Treatment Center, also has Hope by the Sea? So what this means is if I search for drug in um, uh, San Juan Cristino, and um, I've got a 41% chance of getting some of the Pacific Hills content versus 59% um, chance of getting Hope by the Seas content. So if someone's looking for my product or service in my local area, what chance do they have of seeing some of my digital content versus some of my competitors' digital content? So that's really important in terms of exposure and certainly um, search engine exposure. The second portion is the social audience. So here we have the opportunity to put in the social media URLs of our competitors, so their Foursquare accounts, their Twitter accounts. If I just go to edit services here, you can see how we would do that, where we have our competitor here, and I can add their URLs here. So I can then start to track their Facebook, Twitter, and Foursquare audiences over time and benchmark that, not just against my business, but other competitors, because I can have up to three here. So I can see how I'm doing social media-wise and growth-wise in terms of my competition, but also between my competition as well, I can see who's excelling and whatnot. So if I see a spike in Facebook likes or a spike in Twitter followers for one of my competitors, I can then easily go over to their Facebook page and see, okay, what are they doing here? Are they running some ads? Are they putting some really engaging content? Perhaps they've just hired a new agency to run their social media. It gives me some really nice intel on what they're doing social media-wise and doing engagement-wise as well. The last thing I want to show you is the reporting because that's super important. The client can log in here and access their account from this login portal, as you can see, and obviously it has all the data there. However, we have two types of reporting that we send to the client. One are daily alerts, 
Uh, you can't see them on this account because it's a demo account. But the daily alerts are sent every time there's a certain reputation activity, a new review, change in visibility, very positive, very negative mention, etc., etc. So they're sent daily. So your client will always be aware of new reviews that come in, uh, things that are happening on their account. The other portion is that we have a an executive summary, which is an HTML report that gets sent out every Sunday night, Monday morning. And it's uh, a synopsis of everything that I just showed you, but for the week. So where we sat for our visibility sources for the week, what uh, the new reviews that came in that week, etc. So two uh, touch points that are branded for village news and consumers interest that are sent um, um, weekly to the client. So that is the reputation intelligence portion. So just as a synopsis, reputation intelligence, really important, great product for monitoring what's happening online, monitoring, it's really, it's really great for not only ensuring that your client looks the way they want to look on the web in terms of how they're listed on different directory sites, but it's also really important from a local SEO perspective, which is just to close off the reputation intelligence portion, excellent for ensuring that your clients look the way they want to online from a directory perspective, so controlling how they look uh, and what they say about themselves in terms of consistency of data, as well as that local SEO feature listing and positioning from a lead gen perspective. The other portion, um, monitoring and controlling what people say about the business. So understanding those consumer conversations that are happening all the time and being able to start leveraging that positive word of mouth, that positive user-generated content. So what we will do now is we will jump into our social marketing product. So social marketing um, is, again, location-based, and this is the account for Pacific Hills Treatment Center. And... Um, this product we built with the core business functions of a small business in mind. So traditionally social media uh, and social marketing and the core business activities of a small business have been very much disconnected. Um, it wasn't too tricky to convince a small business that it needed a Facebook page. That was a pretty easy conversation because consumers are on Facebook. It's the second highest um, search property on the web. Um, and businesses want to be where consumers are, and consumers want to like businesses and want to engage with them on Facebook. So the argument for getting a business on Facebook and Twitter and what have you has, hasn't been a struggle. It's been what, what do they do with it once they're there. How many times have we seen a business's Facebook page, and you can see when they started it because there's a flurry of activity, there's Hello Worlds and Happy Fridays all over the place, and then it dries up and it becomes Buy My Stuff, nothing, buy my cheaper stuff, nothing, buy my cheaper, cheaper, cheaper stuff, nothing. And that's not the way to engage on social media. So what we did with our social marketing product is we took the core business functions of a small business, generating leads, building fans and engagement, providing customer service, and scheduling posts and updates, and put it into one dashboard. So I'll go to a connecting accounts first. We can connect um, multiple Facebook accounts, Twitter, Google Plus monitoring will be posting to Google Plus in the next couple of weeks here, LinkedIn and Foursquare, so the major search, uh, social media networks. The most exciting portion of this product is the leads portion, lead generation. Now this is for a Pacific Hills treatment center, so you know, if we're realistic, do we think we can generate many leads for a treatment center that focuses on drug and alcohol abuse? probably not the best client or the best vertical for lead generation. If this was a restaurant um, or uh, an auto dealer, you know, we'd have much more opportunity and we can go through a lead like that. But for this, for the treatment center, I put a couple of leads in here. So if we go to our managed leads portion, what we're doing is we're scouring Twitter for anybody that is having a conversation that involves some keywords that we're looking at. So Twitter is full of people pushing out their intent saying their intent, I want to go for lunch, um, I'm, uh, I really like X, Y, Z, uh, I want to do this, that, and the other. People are always just telling people what they're doing. It's pushing, it's push notifications. And what we're doing is we're finding those push notifications and we're putting them into a dashboard so that you can reply to those and start joining those conversations and uh, chatting to those prospects right in the middle of a buying decision. 
So here we have a couple of searches that I have running. So the keyword is alcohol, must include abuse, near the city of San Juan Capistro, with a thousand mile radius. So what does that look like when we go into our lead search? Here we have all the different searches I have running, so I can filter those, but I'm just looking at the top portion here. Substance Abuse Treatment, Seattle Alcohol Treatment Services. So that might be something of interest. So I could then hit reply here, and I can chat to this person directly from this dashboard. There isn't, this is the first time where small businesses have been able to really leverage social media to get some tangible ROI, actually get some business rather than just having a metric that drives fans or likes. Now we can have some metrics of, well, how many leads did you reply to? And of those leads, how many leads did you convert? Um, irrelevant of the business, sales reps do not continuously have business just banging on the door. The phone isn't always ringing. In that downtime, having a product like this, where they can go to organically and run some searches for people that are in the midst of a buying decision is a really nice, uh, is a really nice service to be able to offer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to tee up uh, another lead search so you can see it in a different vertical. So let's assume we're looking at a restaurant. And what time we got here? So uh, we'll go for lunch. Um, now we'll go hungry. And then we'll say must include lunch. And we'll do 100 miles. And we'll do a preview. We can preview our search to see if we're going to get any results. So here we go. You know, I've got a preview here 13 minutes ago, 39 minutes ago, two hours ago. These are all leads for a restaurant. So here we, I'm going to save this. And that, and that lead search is now in my leads tab. And I'm just going to have a look at my hungry search. Arrived in LA, body thinks it's lunchtime, I'm really hungry. Come on, story Kevin, where are you? Brilliant. This is the best sort of lead because this... Um, uh, this person is having a conversation with someone else on Twitter. So as I start to reply to these, I'm jumping into two people's conversations on where they're going to go for lunch. So if I'm in that area, uh, if I'm a small business, if I'm a restaurant, if I'm a food truck, etc., I can now speak directly to this person in the midst of them having a buying decision and say, hey, uh, have our Friday special as X, Y, Z. 39 minutes ago, what's the plan for breakfast and lunch? I'm so hungry. Eating your lunch on your break because you're that hungry. Well, now that you've eaten your lunch, you know, you need some lunch, come and see us. Hopefully you can see how powerful this sort of product is in generating leads uh, for a small business via social media. The other thing I want to mention here is these are not fans and followers of this business. This is Twitter in general. So um, not only are you generating leads, but you're also um, driving that other metric of increasing your followers and fans because you know, these are people that were looking for your service and potentially you can, will then follow you as you start um, communicating with them via this product. So we're really hitting two metrics there. I've done some uh, in-person seminars for some of our, um, some of our partners and uh, uh, to small businesses and their eyes light up when they see this product because it's the first time they've been able to have really um, such easy access to people that are looking for their product or service. So that's the leads portion. If there's no questions, I'll move on to build fans. Build fans works in a very similar way, but what we're doing here is that we're utilizing RSS feeds and Twitter to find engaging content, which as I mentioned before, is traditionally one of the hardest things for a small business to do, find that content. An analogy I like to use is that Facebook and Twitter and those, those accounts or pages are like a vehicle. And, uh, you know, I have a, if I have a lovely Lexus on my driveway, a brand new Lexus, you know, that's great. I've got a really nice vehicle there. If I don't put any gas in it, it's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything for me apart from sitting on my driveway. Social media is the same. I can have the, most, uh, I can have the nicest Facebook page with a lovely cover photo and what have you. But if I don't have any engaging content, if I don't have any gas, that page is going nowhere. It's doing nothing for me. So that's what building fans is all about, finding that engaging content. So we do that, as I say, via RSS and via Twitter. So if I go to my manage content searches here, 
I've got a couple of uh, RSS feeds that are set up based on this vertical health, so the New York Times Wellness blog and the Psych Central News. So I have those RSS feeds coming in, plus I have these Twitter content searches again for alcohol and drug. So if I have a look at my build fans, again I can go over to Twitter and I have my filters. So here we have something about from about depression, top relapse triggers for depression, how to prevent them. So here's an article right here about mental health and prevention. If this was something that I wanted to repost, if this was some really good content, I can hit republish here. It's going to whisk me over to my compose tab. I can send this content out to all of my social media networks at once. And I get this Twitter preview and this Facebook preview. I can cull some of this information. I'll remove those there. And then we have our post that we can send out to our social media networks. So again, find that content and republishing, and I can schedule these to go out at a certain time again, and what have you. And I can select and deselect some of these sources. Same with the RSS here. I can have a look at these RSS articles. Um, and I just pick two that look like they might be in that sort of uh, vertical. Um, um, a, Ribbling for cocaine addiction, etc. So that might be an interesting article to repost from a drug and uh, alcohol prevention standpoint. Again, I can hit republish here. And obviously there's a whole bunch of information here. Too much for Twitter, so I can turn off my Twitter. And here we have my Facebook post. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. 
So RSS is a way to pull in information from um, pre predominantly a news site or a blog site. So rather than having to go to ABC News or CBS News, etc., to see what articles they have, uh, they provide RSS feeds, and uh, uh, RSS stands for really simple syndication. Um, and that's exactly what it's doing. It's just syndicating data. So we we can we have those RSS feeds in our product. What you need to understand is that we can pull in content that is relevant to that small business directly into this platform from a variety of news sites, news sites, that, so your client does not have to find it, and it's going to be served up right in their dashboard. So if I go to manage content searches, and I go to my RSS feeds, I can add an RSS feed. Uh, that's kind of more for advanced users. We have an RSS library. So here are all the sites. So this should really resonate. We're in our health and medical category because we're a treatment center. And so we have access to ABC News Health, BBC News, Huffington Post Health. So all I have to do is hit add here, and I can add the Huffington Post Health RSS feed, or all the health articles that Huffington Post does, to my dashboard now. So now when I have my, now when I'm pulling in content, I'm now pulling in from three different uh, websites directly into our dashboard so we can have a look through those and republish them. Does, does that help? Does that make that a little clearer? For sure. So just to kind of close off the RSS portion, the real benefit is that rather than having to go to Huffington Post and searching through their health section and saying, okay, uh, this might be relevant, this might be relevant, all we're really doing is tapping directly into that portion of the Huffington Post website that has health-related data and saying, this client is a health-related business, I'm interested in health-related content or, or and articles, Please just pull in everything that Huffington Post does health-wise into my dashboard so I can have a look and decide whether it's content that I want to republish or not. That's really the, the nuts and bolts. <clears throat> customer service. Um, traditionally, customer service isn't something that's thought of in a uh, social media sense, although more and more companies are getting better at providing customer service through Twitter and what have you. Every time a client or a prospect tweets or comments on a business's Facebook account or Twitter account, that is a conversation that they're trying to have. Now, if that client came in and wants to have a conversation with the, with the business owner in person or with a staff member in person, you wouldn't ignore them. You wouldn't, if they were standing in your business or at your front desk, you wouldn't ignore, ignore their question or ignore, ignore them in general. Why would you do it on social media when instead of that being a one-to-one -one conversation, it is potentially a one to many conversation. Hundreds, if not thousands of people, depending on how good your social media strategy is, could see you ignoring that tweet or ignoring that person, and that can have a really detrimental effect um, on your business. So what we do in customer service is we take everything that's happening on those Facebook and Twitter accounts and turn those into an individual conversation. So I can flick between my social media accounts here, and I can see the activity on those accounts. And then I can hit comment here. So here we have, thanks for sharing the story, Wendy. I can hit comment here, and I can say, 
uh, and I can then respond back to Wendy. So here was the original comment from us. Deborah Miller said something, now I can say something back to Deborah and continue the conversation on that comment. So it keeps each conversation really nice and tidy, so I can take each tweet or each comment, etc., as its own conversation and give it the time and it deserves from a business standpoint. Finally, scheduling. We've seen some of this before. This allows us to schedule our posts and compose our posts and send those out to our multiple Facebook account, uh, multiple uh, social media accounts. They should also be involved in this process, I believe, uh, so that those uh, lead responses and things of that nature sound as genuine as possible. So, any questions regarding the social marketing product or any of the positioning there? Um, the most important things from my perception is the generating leads, really getting some tangible ROI from your social marketing and social media initiatives, actually getting some business from people who are looking for your product or service uh, and pushing out that intent via social media. Other important portion, finding the gas for your Lexus, finding the content for your Facebook page, and then providing that customer service. Was there anything else you wanted me to go over at this point, Todd? Oh, thank you. For sure. For sure. Um, the good. Having that fresh content on your both website as well as social media accounts, it's easier on social media accounts, uh, is really important for SEO because it's new content. Google rates new content and fresh content really high in its algorithm. So as you're pushing fresh content onto something, that drives its ranking. That's one aspect of republishing that content. The other really important aspect is from a sales perspective. You know. Um, the highest form of selling is education. I think that's a fairly widely known um, uh, perception. And so if you want to be positioned as a thought leader, if the small business wants to be positioned as a thought leader in its vertical, in its industry, um, its social media accounts are the best way to do that. Because people don't like a business or follow a business on, on a social network because they don't care about that business. They do. They, they don't. And they have some value in that business. They associate with that business. At quite a at quite an emotional level in some in some contexts. So, if someone's taken the time to like your page or follow you, they didn't do it because they don't care about the business. They did it because they want information about what that business does. And that's not always sales pitch. That's educational information. If I follow an auto dealer or a repair shop, you know I don't need to get my windscreen fixed or you know get a new set of tires every you know six weeks. I do want you know, summer car care tips. I want. I want them to give me the information about their business. I want them to prove to me that they're a thought leader and they're an expert. And that's the and the social media is the best way to do that because it's the easiest way to do it in terms of pushing content and it's the best way to get in touch with customers because that's where they are. They're on Facebook. They are on those they're on Twitter, they're on those social media networks. So that's the best you need to go where the consumers are and that's where they are and that's where they're spending their time. So that's where you want to be if you need to be in front of them. Why did we? Uh, Foursquare is probably the major check-in site as far, that, as far as we're aware. You know, there's also Facebook check-ins which are integrating and what have you. But as a standalone third-party uh, platform, um, Foursquare is, is really predominant in the check-in space, uh, especially in the food and beverage and tourism um, uh, vertical. And uh, they're also, Foursquare has the option for comments and feature listings as well. And um, they also have excellent uh, data points. So from our perspective, a real important point is getting the best data to your clients. Um, and um, Foursquare provides us with that option, with that functionality. Uh, we do have the opportunity to, put, to post to LinkedIn. We don't track LinkedIn followers. 
Um, I was follow is the right word? Um, I think it is. Um, because most small businesses um, want to push stuff out to LinkedIn, but it's a bit of a, it's B2B rather than B2C in most cases. Um, so and from a dashboard tracking metric, we don't put it in there, but in the reputation intelligence product, we do pull in the LinkedIn account, and in both the reputation intelligence product and social marketing, we post to LinkedIn. So it's very much an important part of our, uh, of our um, social media mix. Excellent. Thanks for your time, guys.